Don't get up, Chief. Chris, how are you? Chief, first of all, I want to thank you for the wonderful cooperation you and your boys have given us on the first picture of the Alarm series. Well, Dick, I can assure you it's been a pleasure to us. Uh, I think it probably, if you'd been on as many fires as I've been, and seen the, the tragic results of these fires, that you could more readily visualize exactly what the Alarm series will do. By the way, uh, how do you like being a fireman? Well, I must admit it's pretty rugged. <laughs> yeah, it's a rugged life, all right. Thing is that, that you've probably just seen a little phase of the actual fireman's life. Now, he doesn't only put out fires, but he's rescuing people. He's risking his life every day. He's out here fighting oil fires and forest fires and waterfront fires and saving these little tots and children from drowning in swimming pools and beaches and people that uh, become involved in cave ends. All of those emergencies, Dick, it's a, it's a big thing in a fireman's life to get out and work to save the public and to work in all these emergencies. Well, it certainly ought to give us a wealth of material for dramatic and thrilling stories as well as amusing, shouldn't it? Well, that's true, Dick. And uh, by the way, I don't think you probably know, but there are six million firemen, volunteers and paid firemen in the United States. Six million? Six million, that is correct. See, that's pretty good news. That's almost a ready-made audience, what with all the relatives and everything, same as I have. Say, there's something else I'd like to ask you. Do you think a series like Alarm would help prevent serious accidents and tragic uh, fires throughout the country? There's no doubt about it, Dick. Uh, sponsors of this Alarm series should be very well satisfied and get a lot of satisfaction out of giving this great public service. It's going to reach millions of homes. And they're all going to have a good public education as far as the fire service is concerned. Well, that's wonderful, Chief, and it's nice to hear. Well, I guess there isn't much more we can say except uh, let's get on with the show. All right, Dave. Thanks, Thanks again. You betcha. Bye. Thanks for coming. Bye, Good Dave. luck to you. Thank you. we returned to quarters. That was the third fire in a row in the same neighborhood. One woman received second-degree burns. We made the headlines again, Captain. That's me right there. Recognize you any place, Matt. <laughs> Just my luck to be facing the wrong way. How about a cup of coffee? Later, I have to finish this report. How do you spell indecidable? Spell it? I can't even pronounce it. Engine 8, Captain London. Get right on it, Chief. Yes, sir. Got a new assignment, arson squad. When do we start? Tonight, just as soon as our relief arrives. The cleaning woman from the Price Street Fire is able to talk again. When we took to the hospital? That's right. We'll start with her. Can I use your phone? Go ahead. What's the matter? I'll tell you in a minute. Hello, baby. Say, I won't be able to go to that movie tonight because I, uh... All right, dear. Good mind. What'd she say? She got very personal, Captain. Fire 
problem. May I speak to Mrs. Denby? It'll be all right. Thank you. But don't stay too long, Captain. I won't. Mrs. Denby, I hate to bother you at a time like this. Sir. It's all right, sir. I'm Captain London, fire department. Yes, I heard. I can't tell you much about the fire, though. I was too frightened. Do you uh, know how the fire started? Well, I was in the Andrews apartment across the hall, changing the linens. That was on the second floor. Yes. I, I was in the bedroom, and I, I thought I smelled smoke. So I went to the hall door. The minute I opened it, there it was. The hallway was all ablaze. Did you uh, see anyone in the hall? I, I'd rather not say. Mrs. Denby, if you saw someone, why are you afraid to tell me? I don't want to get in any trouble. Uh, Ms. Debbie, if you don't withhold any information, maybe you could help us. What is it you're afraid of? It's the convoy. Lives on the second floor. He warned me not to tell anybody, and he was real rough about it. He runs around with a bad lot. His father ordered them to stay out of the apartment when he and Mrs. Conn were away. And today, there were two of those hoodlums there. Were they still in the apartment after the fire started? I don't know. I only saw the convoy running through the fire to the stairs. I yelled for him to help me, but he kept right on going. Please don't tell him I told you. I won't. Now, Mrs. Denby, before the fire started, did you see anyone around the building who didn't belong there? A stranger, perhaps? No strangers. Only the delivery people. Grocery boy. Taylor. Oh, yes, and the postman. Nobody but them. Thanks. Our next job was to check the premises on Price Street. It was the third fire within 10 days in one residential neighborhood. At the first two, tests showed mechanics waste at the source of the fire. That's why we were working on the possibility of arson. The Price Street fire was code A, same as the other two. Which means arson. That's all we've got so far. Oh, it doesn't make sense. What doesn't make sense? All I said was no movie and she blew her top. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can find young Carnes. Take a look around the apartment that was burned out, 2D. You the manager? Yes, I'm Mrs. Hiller. What can I do for you? I'm Captain London, fire department, arson squad. I wonder if you could tell me where I could find young Ted Carnes. Well, he's out in the garage a minute ago, tinkering with his car. Thanks very much. You're welcome. job you've got here. Anything wrong with that? You looking for something? Not especially. You Ted Kahn? Yeah, who are you? I'm Captain London, fire department. I'd like to ask you a couple of questions about the fire, if you don't mind. I mind. I got a date. But you'll ask them anyway. That's right. Were you there when the fire started? And how? I almost got trapped. Just a minute. Is there anybody in the second floor hall when the fire started? The only one I know is that cleaning woman, that Denby dame. Did you see her? She's always there on Tuesdays. Is that your day off? Yeah. Every day is my day off. You seem to be doing all right. Did you find him? Yeah, but I didn't get much. Hey, that kid's hard as nails. How'd you make out? Well, I got some samples of the ashes from where the fire was the worst. I think it's where it started. Turn it over to Fredericks for testing. Wait a minute, I got something else for you. Some blackjack. From the Carnes apartment? I found it under a badly burned lounge. I think I just talked to the guy that owns this. But you don't start fires with these. Yeah, but it could mean something. Good. Hang on to it. 
Well, let's call it a day. Tomorrow morning, we'll start checking everybody on the cleaning ladies list. Come on, I'll buy you a half Oh, I can use it. We found the groceries boy and talked to him, but we drew a blank. He didn't know anything that would help. He didn't know anything, period. The tailor was next. There was a chance he might have seen the person who set the fire. Yes? Captain London, fire department. Farman McEwen. Oh, I thought maybe you were the police. Why, did you have some trouble, Mr. Lester? A month ago, I was held up here in my shop. Why do they let bandits walk around our streets? They took everything I had. I'll never get a penny of it back. I'm sure the police will get it back for you. No, even the young ones come around. They break windows and steal clothes I have to pay for. I tell the police, and what do they do? Nothing. Mr. Lester, were you at the fire on Price Street yesterday, number 240? Yes, I watched. It made me late with my deliveries. Did you uh, see anyone hanging around the building? A stranger, maybe? Oh, I saw a lot of people. You know how they always run to see a fire. How should I know who is a stranger? Do you remember anything out of the ordinary that happened? I wish I could. I'd like to help. But there's nothing I can tell you. Nothing. We continued to question Lester, but in the end we had drawn another blank. We had one more lead to check at the local post office. Captain London, fire department. I'd like to ask you a couple of questions about the Price Street fire yesterday morning. I don't know what I can do. You were on your route about the time, weren't you? I guess so. We're trying to locate anyone who might have come out of the building just before it started. It's just possible you may have seen someone. I don't like fires. I got away as fast as I could. Then, uh, you didn't see anyone. I've told you as much as I know, I didn't see anybody. Now look, if you don't mind, I have to catch a bus. I'm sorry to bother you, Mr. Brennan. Was Brennan able to help you, Captain? He wasn't very cooperative. I realize that some people just don't like to answer questions. Uh, Brennan is a bit difficult. Lost his wife about a year ago, and it has changed him. Too bad, but those things do happen. Not too often. You see, she was burned to death in a fire. This car needs a wash, Mac. Well, if we stop rolling, I'll get to it, Captain. Where to? Back to quarters. I'll stop at the laboratory and get the ashes tested. Give you a chance to wash this jalopy. This is what we got out of the Price Street residue. Mechanics waste, huh? That's right. That's a third fire with the same method of operation. We're looking for a fire bug. I think you're right, Captain. Lab Fredericks. Yeah, he's here. For you. Captain London. Yeah, I'll get right on it, Chief. Another fire in the Price Street area. Regan says it's code A, same as the others. See you, Fredericks. All right. Let's roll, Mac. Remind me to watch the car someday, will you? Like the same pattern, Captain. Get your report in as soon as you can, will you? Right, Chief. Well, we didn't interrupt your pinochle game, did we, Captain? Most inconsiderate. I wish you guys could arrange to have your fires on my day off. <laughs> what time did it happen, Mrs. Keller? Oh, about two o'clock. About two o'clock. 
Hello, Jim, Captain. Certainly knocked this one down in a hurry. Knocked down his right old brother. <laughs> this is Mrs. Keller who lives here. How do you do, Mrs. Keller? Hi. I'm Captain London, Fire Department, Arson Squad. This is Fireman McKeown. Hello. Do you uh, mind if we have a look around? Heck no, look all you want to. If you can find anything worth keeping, I'll flip with you. I won this at the beach before I was married. <laughs> oh, if I knew then what I know now. Ooh. Anything to follow up on? Started in the back service empty and burned out. We didn't disturb anything. Have a look around, will you, Mac? Pick up some samples. Fine. It's all yours, Captain. Thanks, Mrs. Keller. Sure is a mess, ain't it? See that again. Yep, sure is a mess. Well, I was wanting to redecorate anyway. Now I got a good excuse. You certainly have. But it won't clean itself up, that's for sure. Gerald! 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 I'm coming. What do you want? Well, where do you think you're going? I got a date. You can't leave me to clean this place alone. Oh, let the insurance company worry about it. Be sure you get the dough for my suit. Boy, just like his old man. I know what you mean. You got any kids? No. You're lucky. I am? Mm-hmm. Mrs. Keller, did you uh, turn in the alarm? I sure did. Oh, would you like a cool drink? No, thanks. Huh. Uh, do you know how the fire started? I wish I knew. I'd have somebody scalped. Just a little longer, and I could have been burned to death. Look, you had to answer the doorbell. Which bell was it? The outside doorbell. Hmm. Nobody in their right mind would have stood at that door with the hall of raging fire to ring out doorbell. Then you don't know who rang the bell. Sure I know. Bills. That's all I get nowadays is bills. It was the postman who rang the outside doorbell. Postman. Anything at the Keller fire this morning? I think so, Chief. I'm just writing up a report. Well, we better get on with it, Ed, before someone's called on to headquarters. I got some time, Captain. Yeah, I think so. Good. I'll wash the car. This is from Central Headquarters. The time of each call and the fires were investigating. This is from the post office. The time Brennan reaches each of the same locations. Yeah, who's Brennan? The postman. Uh, Brennan was on the scene before each of four fires, huh? Well, he misses the Grove Street fire. But he could have, uh, he could have gotten over there. He's only two blocks off his route. I think you got enough to hold him on suspicion, Ed. Police will cooperate. Okay. Lieutenant Jones? London speaking. I want to pick up a arson suspect. Let's go. Oh, no. Four fires. You had access to the premises. You're known to have entered three of them before the fire started. Am I? You have an obsession against fires, Brennan. That's probably what makes you start them. That's your idea. Do you think you could prove it? We'll keep at it until we do. You see, we know what was used to start the fires. We can trace that. I had nothing to do with the fires. You can help us by telling the truth. I told you the truth. I don't know anything about the fires. Mr. Brennan, the police can hold you on suspicion of arson. Lieutenant Jones. It's for you, Ed. London speaking. Right. We're rolling on a new fire, the Lake Street area. That's your territory, isn't it, Brennan? Sure, Lake Street. But I'm not there. You can't pin this on me. You want to ride with me, Larry? Yeah. I'll turn Brennan over to the sergeant. Let's go. pushing that car out on the street when we got here. Came from that burning garage over there. Back end was filled with guns. May mean something. Good. Let's take a look. Hey. Yeah, I know a couple of these fellas. I saw them at two of the other fires. Take a look at this, Captain. Well, quite an arsenal. Want me to book them in? No, just take them down and hold them for questions. Okay, let's go. Take it easy, son. 
I called an ambulance. You all right? No, I'm all right. <laughs> Got a cigarette? Yeah. Is it a hot one? Plenty hot. I watched. I prayed for you. Thanks. I know Ruthie. Does never day the fire department invites me to lunch? Congratulations, Richard. Oh, thanks, Lieutenant. Say, Ed, I meant to call you. We, uh, we'll let Brennan go. We can pick him up again if we can make it stick. What's got you down? Five fires and the fire bug's still loose. I'd like to talk to the other three who picked up at the last fire. Maybe you could have had that without the lunch. He loves to have you around, Lieutenant. Okay, I'll bring you up to date, Ed. The three of them talked and we picked up two others. They admitted a flock of robberies, one of which was your tailor friend, uh, Lester. They found the loot and Lester will get back most of his money. You mind if I tell him? No, it's okay. But about those hoodlums, I don't think you'll ever tie arson on them. Why should they set fire to their own hangout? It's where those punks work on their hot rods. It was a fire that led to their arrest. It just doesn't make sense. I was thinking about that myself. We haven't got anybody else. Then you better get somebody else, because the only business these crooks had was robbery. Robbery? I should have thought of that. This is what we want. Here's a good one, Mac. Let's tell old Lester you get his money back. Come on. Hello. 
Is Ruthie all right? Not sure yet. I've been thinking a lot about her. Poor child. She had a pretty rough deal. We've got some news for you, Mr. Lester. News? What kind of news? They arrested the man that robbed you. You'll get your money back. I didn't think it would happen. Mr. Lester, do you have a delivery book? Why do you ask? I'd like to see it if I may. to get even. You wanted to pay them back for everything they did to you. You can't prove it. It's all guesswork. You can never prove it. We can try. You use that waste to start every one of those fires. Stand back. Use your head, Lester. Arson's one thing, murder's another. I didn't think I'd get my money back. I didn't think. Yeah, you'll have plenty of time to think now. Mac, turn him over to Lieutenant Jones. Uh, they robbed me. They took everything I had. They deserved it. They may have deserved it, but Ruthie didn't. Take him away. <laughs> Joseph Lester was booked at police headquarters, and that wrapped up the arson case. But there was still one call to make before the case could be marked closed for me. Good of you to come by, Captain London. Well, I was sort of appointed by the boys over at the station house. They uh, sent her a present. How is she? She's doing fine. I'll be grateful to you all my life. Would you, um, would you give her this? Mother. She's awake. Ruthie, this is the man who carried you out of the burning building. Hi, Ruthie. Hello. I hear you're getting along fine. As a matter of fact, the doctor said you'd be running around like mad in a couple of days. I hope so. Well, when you get well, I want you to come down to the fire station and see me. I'll give you a ride on one of those nice big red fire engines. All right. All right. Almost forgot what I came for. This is Smokey. Smokey, this is Ruthie, your new mama. 